All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the best graphics card you can get for your MacBook Pro. And that's right, I've got a Vega 64 right here running on an eGPU, and I'm gonna jump straight into performance. All right, so I've been playing around with this Vega 64 for the past six hours, and I'm just setting up my heavy because uh, the card that I've got isn't compatible with High Sierra, although, strangely enough, it did work on High Sierra on my 13 inch MacBook, but it didn't work on my 15 inch. Anyway, I've switched up to Mojave, and uh, I gotta say one thing. This card is silent AF. I mean, check, check it out here. I've got 10 film grain effects, okay? And previously on my 555X, I could only handle two. And on my Vega 16, I could only handle four. This guy, I've got 10, 2x speed. And just look at it. You can hear a bit of static, and the fans kick in. Look how, listen to how silent the fans are. Now, I don't know if you can remember, but when these, the fans on this guy were maxing out, it was like Whereas this guy is, it, it's so quiet and it's, it's rocking out the 10 film grain effects, no problems, and forget that. I could just launch any project here, so I'm going to go into Sydney, go to the airport. Ah, check it out, Ash Garo, he's in the airport, flying around there. Everything is looking good, it's fast, and if I start to um, do a render, I'm going to do some rendering over here. Look at the fans, the fans have just stopped. The, 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 the fans are just not functionality on this card, it's so cool. And I'll show you activity monitor over here. Uh, so we got Vega 64, it's going to be updating in a second. You can see 100% of Vega 64 is being utilized, 100% to do the background rendering. And again, the fans are just barely moving. You can't, you couldn't hear them kick up. It's just insane. So in Photoshop, when using rendering effects, for example, blurring or sharpening, it's the last time that took. 32 seconds, this time it took 23 seconds. I got about a 40% improvement, but most importantly, the experience was a lot more smoother, so I can instantly switch to the blurs and get a nice preview straight away in Final Cut Pro. My projects, they're pretty simple, they're not rendering heavy, but I did get 20% improvement in the rendering speeds. Unreal Engine, I experienced a 4X bump in FPS. I went from 16 frames a second to over 70. All right, this is the digital human sample in Unreal Engine. And we're getting it between 11 to 16 frames a second, depending on if we're moving the camera or not. Digital human, and he's going currently 70, 70, over 70 frames a second. Let's move the mouse. mouse. So when you move the mouse, he drops to around 25, 22 frames a second. It's an action. And when you let go of the mouse, it goes over 70, around 75. And in gaming, the number one game that I don't play, Fortnite, went from 3 to 4 frames a second <laughs> to 40 to 50 frames a second. And this is on an ultra-wide display, epic settings, 3 <laughs> to 4 frames a second. Yeah. We've got a big chigger over there. And then my Jacob. They're going to get... They're going to get smashed up with a 10 frames a second. We're going 50 frames a second. And we're back now around 45 frames a second. And I've touched. So, boom, shaka, lack out. You got yourself some performance gains there. Now, that's not where it stopped because you can't run this card on boot camp. However, Getting this to work on bootcamp is still a pain. I couldn't get it working on my 13 inch MacBook Pro. I'm gonna try again. I did get it working with my 15 inch. Um, I did have some problems with the drivers, but pretty much plug your eGPU on the right side on one of the ports, and then you can use all the USBs on the left, and performance of Windows is superb. For example, Geekbench on macOS Mojave, I get around 142,000 OpenCL score. However, on Windows, I get 195,000 like that. All right. This is pretty cool, look, there's no fans running, but check out the Geekbench OpenCL score. 
195,000. And best of all, this car in particular. Look, the fans, they just don't want to run. If there's any noise that you're hearing right now, it's from this eGPU enclosure. I know I said the Razor Core X, the fans aren't loud, but when your GPU is silent and it refuses to spin, you notice the fans a bit. But with a two meter cable, that stuff can be reduced. So right now I'm in Unreal Engine and I'm on my 555X and I'm compiling shaders. It's only uh, 600 to go. Interestingly enough, uh, you can see that the GPU is going at 100. It's uh, completely getting overloaded. And what that means is using apps is just horrendously slow. This page is uh, it's going really choppy and slow because uh, the GPU is being completely overloaded by Unreal Engine. Other advantages I've noticed is that when I am rendering on my Mac, I can still use my Mac. For example, previously when I was using Unreal Engine on my Mac, it would hog all the system resources and if I try using Crow on the side, it'd be choppy as hell. With the Vega 64, I can actually do multiple stuff and I feel that my system has room to breathe. And I'll show you some more stuff in history. So when you do have this graphics card as the primary GPU, come over here, you can see that my Radeon 555X, it uses around five watts of power. Now typically, I, I need, it needs around 10 to 12. So right now I'm saving seven watts. Now the Vega 16 was using around eight when it's on its baseline, and most of the time it's on its baseline over here. Look, check it out, it's on its baseline. I've, I've got it showing the footage on my internal display, and it's doing all the processing on the external eGPU. So as you can see, a little bit of usage on my high side, but do you hear the MacBook Pro fans? I can't hear them. They're a lot quieter. Usually when I'm using the GPU to do all these effects and all this kind of craziness, this guy starts whirring like a monster. But the fact that I've offloaded the GPU task onto this super quiet, it's, it's, I'm gonna say, it's almost like some sort of magic, this GPU. It's almost like it's a, some sort of black, dark art form of magic, quiet, noise levels. I'm losing what I'm saying, but you get what I'm saying. All right, now some of you may be wondering why I didn't get a Radeon 7 instead of this guy. Well, one, Radeon 7 is around twice. The cost of this is sold out anyway, so I can't get it anymore. But the thing that put me off is all the reviews, they were saying it's a very noisy card. The fans on the Vega 2, the Radeon 7, that goes 3,000 reps per minute, and they got three of them. These fans, they're barely even on most of the time, and the highest I've ever seen them go is 1,600. So. It's a very quiet card. Secondly, macOS support is unknown. I talked to my mate, Western Gents, check out his channel. He's gonna have a review of Radio 7 very soon. He so far said that he isn't working on macOS. And of course, um, the thing is, with macOS drivers, you can't customize them. Unlike on Windows, where you get the AMD settings app and you can control if you want a cool and balanced mode, if you want to go turbo performance, ready on chip, all that stuff. On Mac, you don't have those choices, so you get what you get. Whereas this card, you have a BIOS switch, to be honest, I don't know what it does. I tried all the settings and it ran about the same, but I'm sure someone out there will tell me how to use it or I'll figure it out. But the card runs quiet and fast as it is, just out of the box. So that's why I got the Vega 64 instead of the Radeon 7. And if you stayed on this long, the card that I got was the ROG Republic of Gamers edition of the Vega 64. The reason why I got this one is I did a lot of research and this one is probably the best one you can get. It's the quietest and the best value of money. And the best thing about this card, in my experience, it comes with a three year warranty. One top tip, if you are getting this card, this is a big, fat, chunky card. So the only eGPU enclosure that I could fit in is the Razor Core X. I really, really, really wanted to fit in the OWC Helios 650 FX because it's got a variable speed fan. So when the car doesn't need cooling, the fans hardly spin, you can't hear it. But unfortunately, it was just a little bit this much too big for it. So if you are getting one of these big, fat, juicy cards, make sure you get the right enclosure or just get a smaller card and live with a nice GPU enclosure. All right, any top tips from our female techies out there? <sighs> My two top tips are one. Oh, I got a chat. Number one. Okay, guys, coming for a complete novice, this thing just looks so cool, right? You know, I'm walking around the flat at nighttime and I see this thing breathing inside the bedroom. It's going 
It's like red flashing. Oh my God, what is that in your room, Ash? And he's like, it's a graphics card. I'm like, that is so cool. So that is the first thing I would say is pretty awesome about this, is the beautiful color. The second thing that I've noticed about this from my perspective is the sound. Okay, yes, Ash has probably spoken about this, but seriously, it hardly makes a noise. His laptop makes a louder noise. So yeah, there you have it from my perspective, sound and aesthetics, beautiful, bellissimo, buy it now. I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you to buy it now. If you want to buy it, you're going to buy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gone. Bye. All right, thanks for our resident female in tech. As you can see, we're a diverse company. We hire all the genders. If you want to apply to join us, let us know in the comments below. Um, we don't pay anything, but uh, let us know in the comments below. What's we doing right now? We get to work. Babe, it's uh You got come in the I shop. know I know it's it's um I know you love your present, but seriously it's it's Valentine's oh, yeah, Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day weekend. So uh, where are we going? <laughs>